Good evening. We have with us tonight Dick, WN3R, who has been a member of our Montgomery Amateur Radio Club for over 30 years, and his interest in amateur radio goes back even further. Dick earned his novice ticket and then his general class license by the time he was 13. He studied engineering at Cornell University and earned his master's degree at George Washington. While Dick considers himself more a station builder than an operator, he still has operated simple QRP stations and substantial QRO stations, mostly CW and SSB on HF. As a public service, he built and maintained a VHF Winlink node at his radio QTH in Frederick. Dick's newest interest into all things radio is the digital mobile radio, or as it's commonly called, DMR. DMR allows him to talk to hams all over the world, easily with inexpensive equipment and no outside antennas required. So to tell us more about this exciting technology, here is Dick. And Dick, it's over to you. Okay, thank you very much, Alex. Let's, let's hope this works. Okay, uh, share. Um, okay, thank you, everybody, and thank you for coming tonight. Um, uh, the way I got into DMR primarily was to stave off Alzheimer's. Um, I challenged myself every couple of years to learn something new, and I thought I would try DMR. What a mistake that was for an old guy. The learning curve for DMR is huge, and I didn't realize how huge it was. And um, amateur radio... Uh, to me is 50% technical and 50% social. And um, you generally, you have to go through all the technical stuff before you can enjoy the social stuff. And it occurred to me that since DMR uh, uses um, a, uh, a, UHF, a UHF HT, uh, then it's perfect for technician class licenses uh, to keep and maintain their interest in ham radio because now they can talk around the world. So, uh, uh, I came up with a program. Essentially, what I'd like to do is I'd like to try to recapture as many uh, uh, inactive technician class licenses as possible. And I'd like to introduce uh, DMR to, uh, to uh, hams uh, experienced or inexperienced, old and new alike. Um, and, uh, but I'm reversing the process. The process generally is you got to learn all the technical stuff that I had to learn, this big, huge learning curve before you can talk to anybody. And I'm saying, nope, we're not gonna do it that way anymore. For DMR, you're gonna talk first. And the example that I use is uh, fishing. My brother-in-law loves to fish and I like to bring the sandwiches and the beer. However, if he had me come out three hours earlier to get, prepare the boat and stay three hours later cleaning the boat, that would be my last fishing trip. Uh, I just wanna fish. And um, some people are going to say that uh, DMR, because it uses the internet, is not real radio. But uh, again, my fishing example is this. If I want to eat fish, I'm going to Safeway. DMR is going to Safeway, as opposed to going on my brother-in-law's boat to go fishing. Okay, let's go. Well, let's hope this works. Okay, here we go. Digital mobile radio. Um, We've all heard of uh, uh, Fusion and D-Star, and those are tied to manufacturers. So the radios are very expensive. Uh, DMR is a standard. It's not a product. It's not tied to any manufacturer. And what this means now is, is that you can buy a DMR radio on Amazon for as little as $13, $14. And because it is a standard, the most expensive radio and the least expensive radio sound identical. Now, DX uh, QSOs depend on the internet. As a matter of fact, all QSOs depend on the internet. And if you notice in this particular slide, um, uh, there are uh, uh, people that use their UHF radio to talk to a repeater. That repeater is connected to the internet, to another repeater, to another UHF radio. Another flavor of it is to use a hotspot. And a hotspot, we'll explain to you what a hotspot is in a minute, but it also connects to the internet and the ham on the other end can be on a hotspot or a repeater. 
Uh, we want to thank Al, KN3U, for coming up with these slides. I will tell you which ones are his and which ones are mine. And you can tell that this is Al's because all the lines are straight. Um, essentially, at the top, we are transmitting. We, we speak into the microphone. There's a, uh, a, a chip inside the radio that converts from analog to digital. Okay, then the digital data goes out to the transmitter. And, and if we're going to receive it, it's completely reverse. The receiver comes in, digital data goes to the digital analog com com uh, converter, and then out comes a voice signal. Uh, again, Al's slide. Uh, Al uh, wanted to show you that a DMR radio can talk to a DMR radio without the internet, without a repeater, no different than an analog radio. Or they have special repeaters called DMR repeaters, which basically means they're digital repeaters, similar to D-Star. And uh, you can be in the same town, you know, the same uh, uh, distance of a UHF handheld to a repeater is gonna be 10, 12 miles uh, in either direction. And it's no different than analog, but it is digital. Now here's where it gets interesting. I, I'm the purple guy, okay, in the lower left-hand corner. The, I talked to a hotspot. A hotspot is that little tiny thing. It weighs probably two ounces. That is a transmitter receiver, UHF transmitter receiver, uh, converts from, uh, uh, from uh, uh, the digital to the internet. And that internet can hook up to a DMR repeater. Okay, and somebody can be going around in a little green car and um, uh, talk to me. And, and uh, by the way, that internet is uh, as long as you want, obviously, all around the world. <laughs> um, because everything is digital, there's no such thing as a radio frequency channel. Uh, this is what we're used to in analog. Uh, a repeater would generally operate on a, on a frequency pair. And if you wanted to talk to that repeater, you would tune to that frequency pair and talk through that repeater. Uh, because everything is digital, uh, instead of meeting up on a frequency, we meet up in a talk group. And if you're using uh, AOL terminology, it's very similar to a chat room. Um, the, the, uh, uh, there are worldwide uh, uh, talk groups where sometimes you can hear hundreds of hams on Saturday morning all around the world checking into the net. It's nothing more than a demonstration of uh, the power of DMR and the popularity of DMR. Okay, what is the internet? Why do we use the internet? I mean, this is a good example. Uh, uh, the internet replaces lots of things. Okay, uh, you don't have to have a lot of equipment. You don't have to have outside antennas. There's absolutely no dependence on the sun cycle, and your HOA, HOA uh, doesn't even know you have the radio because it fits in your pocket. Because it's digital, it's, uh, there's no fading, QSB, there's no noise, and there's no radio interference. <clears throat> um, you know, in the, in the old days, we had to wait a long time to find stations to contact. I remember just tuning around my, my, uh, in my novice station, just listening to hear somebody call CQ. That doesn't exist anymore. Now, um, Operating skills and special technical knowledge are not needed at all, not with my program. But if you wanna learn about DMR, I encourage everybody to do so. So here's my, my big takeaway. I'd like you to get away, I'd like to take this away with you today is, is that ham radio is both social and technical and DMR is strictly the social part. Think about that for a minute. Okay. By the way, Alex brought this to my attention. She says, wait a minute, during emergencies, we don't want to depend on the internet. And I agree with that. So we're going to keep our DMR uh, contacts local if, if in fact there is a, uh, uh, an emergency of some sort. So um, hams talk to each other face to face. Hams talk to each other over the telephone. Hams talk to each other over radio. Okay. And in this case, we're talking to each other over the internet. Yes, there's a radio involved, but for all intents and purposes, it's radio, I mean, it is internet communication. Okay, 
on the left side is my a picture of my station which does not not exist anymore uh and i put a arbitrary price on it of seventy one hundred dollars i have no idea how much it cost um and on the right is my new station $71 versus $7,100. The radio is small enough to fit in your pocket. And that little box next to it is called a hotspot. The hotspot, as I said before, has a UHF VHF receiver in it. And it connects to the internet, either Wi-Fi or Ethernet. Okay. This was uh, 12 minutes of listening to the worldwide channel called uh, Talk Route 91. 12 DX stations I heard in just 15 minutes. Now, the thing you want to look about this DX station list is they are all over the world. You know, some places it's in the middle of the night, so they're not going to be on. But certainly many, many other places they're going to be on. Uh, the, the good time to listen in the morning is 11 o'clock. Another good time to listen in the evening is also 11 o'clock. By the way, this is a uh, a screenshot of the hotspot traffic on a web browser. So you get to see what's going on because you basically put into your web browser the IP address of the hotspot and up comes up this uh, uh, the screen. Okay, you can go mobile with it. Uh, the picture on the left is... Uh, was my old car. And the picture on the right is my new car. Uh, that just shows a little HT on the right and with a hotspot uh, uh, in the middle of the dash. Now in my car, the setup that I have is, is I have a small hotspot, but it, um, it connects to the Wi-Fi in the car because my car has Wi-Fi built into it. You can also connect to a cell phone if you want, <laughs> or of course you can use it in your house. All right. DMR is interesting because it allows us to do some, some great things without spending too much money. And the beautiful thing about it is, is that technician class license operators can talk around the world and they don't need to have a general or an extra class license. The uh, talk group 3100 is nationwide United States. Talk group 91 is worldwide. For under $100, you can be talking around the world, crystal clear communication, easily. No fuss, no muss. The antenna is two and a half inches tall to talk around the world. Okay, this is the, uh, uh, the installation in my car. Uh, I put a large display, this is about a three and a half inch display on my hotspot. And it's held to the, uh, uh, in, in place by a uh, cell phone um, suction cup. This, I was waiting to go into physical therapy on January 2nd, between 1043 and 1055. So that's about 12 minutes. I heard stations in Turkey, France, India, and China in 12 minutes. And I could talk to any one of them if I wanted to. But I was too busy taking pictures. Okay, the station requirements to get on DMR are pretty simple. You need a, a, a DMR UHF HD. The cheapest I've been able to find one on, on, on Amazon is $12. The hotspot, we'll talk about hotspot costs. Hotspot costs go anywhere from about $50 if you buy all the parts from China to um, $400 if you buy a gold-plated hotspot from a company called Bridgecom. And the hotspot needs to connect to the internet. Any class of license in the United States works, technician, extra, or general. So as a technician class, think about this. Technician class people are inactive, because they try ham radio, they get a $25 HT, they talk to nobody, or the conversations are uninteresting, and we lose them. Imagine if we could get them on DMR and have them talk around the world 
with her technician class license. I think that would grab their attention. At least I hope so. Okay, let's, let's show you what's available. Uh, Cotair makes basically three radios. Uh, this radio, the first one, uh, has a display. It's great for a blind ham because it talks to you. It tells you what the volume level is. It tells you how the battery condition. And it tells you what channel you're on. Even though there's a display, it's not the kind of display that we're used to. It's just channel one, two, three, four. Uh, uh, get it on sale, $15.89. Cotair, oh, by the way, it's also analog and digital, but it's only a couple of watts or low power, maybe a half a watt. The next Cotair radio is a real um, uh, 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 heavy duty bulletproof radio. And it's heavier than most ham uh, uh, HTs that I've had. Uh, you can buy it for $35, $34, um, and um, it has a real display on it. So the main difference between these radios and what they cost is the display. If you want a mobile radio, uh, uh, both uh, UHF uh, and VHF and uh, analog and digital, uh, here's one from Radio Oddity, and it sells for about $229. But if you're lucky from time to time, you can find them on sale for as little as $190. Um, the, uh, uh, a TYT is a Chinese manufacturer. Uh, this HT is a, is a real nice HT for $105. Uh, the beauty of it is, is that you can load in special firmware called OpenGD77, which really makes programming the radio very uh, efficient and very easy. This is my favorite radio. Uh, uh, the reason I like this radio is because it fits in my pocket. I use it in the car, I stick it in my glove box and the, uh, the antenna is made out of plastic. It can never break off. So it's like a bulletproof radio for the car. And I use this radio um, almost every day, $75. Okay, here's another one from Radio Oddity. Uh, $159 with tax because you got a $10 discount. Um, it's, uh, it's a nice radio. It has a better display than most radios and it may be worth $170. By the way, I bought all of these toys just so I could give this talk and make it easy for everybody to get on DMR. I basically, you know, unlike a, uh, uh, um, HF where you have to spend $3,000 for a radio, uh, here you buy a radio for $12, $30, $100, $200, and um, you end up with too many radios. Uh, this GD88 has a nice display. It actually has two radios inside of it that are independent of each other. Again, analog and digital, uh, UHF and VHF. And notice that it comes with APRS. Now it says crossband repeater. I don't know how that works. Never got to that part. Okay, this is the most money you can spend for an HT. This is the Anytone 878. It is the gold standard in DMR radios, in my opinion. Um, you can hook up a Bluetooth uh, earpiece to it. You have a Bluetooth uh, uh, push to talk button. Uh, the display is fantastic. It shows everybody you're talking to. Um, their, their names, their QTH, uh, their call signs. Uh, fantastic radio, $314. You can't spend any more money than that and get the best radio there is, in my opinion. Okay, this is what I did. I stupidly spent $800 to do a plug and play package. I, then once I did that and I figured out how DMR works, and how it programs and everything there is to know about it, I was on a mission to do it as cheaply as possible. So I could bring technicians back into the ham radio. Okay, so these are all the different radios that I, uh, that I bought. Uh, some of them are, uh, uh, I have more than one of the same thing. Um, they're uh, 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 the, the radio that is, um, but does this pointer show up, Alex? I guess it does, right? 
It does. Yeah, it it does. does. Sorry. I was okay. muted. Sorry. No problem. No problem. Okay. This is the little $12 radio. Okay. And I'm going to tell you what's special about that in a minute. It has 32 channels. Um, this is a heavy duty radio. The one that I said uh, weighs about as much as a brick. Okay. And that, and this is the gold standard radio here. Now notice how short these antennas are. You're only transmitting two feet, three feet, low power. So you don't have to have a full size antenna to use DMR. Okay. A hotspot, we'll show you pictures of them in a minute. This is the, 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 the bridge that takes the uh, uh, RF from your DMR radio, the HT, okay, and connects you to the internet. Now, pay attention to this part. This is really cool. Okay. You can connect it to the internet by Wi-Fi, wired internet, or both. So what that means is if you want to plug it into your router, you can. If you just wanted to use it on your house Wi-Fi, you can. You want to use it in a Wi-Fi in your car, you can. You want to use it with your uh, cell phone set up a, as a Wi-Fi hotspot, you can. So if you want to walk down the street and be on DMR, take your, your cell phone with you, take your hotspot, hook it up to your cell phone, and your cell phone connects your Wi-Fi to the internet. Um, many of these, uh, um, uh, many of these uh, hotspots use a Raspberry Pi or Nano Pi single board computer. They're real expensive right now, but the right price for a uh, a Raspberry Pi Zero is fifteen or sixteen dollars, and they're charging a hundred dollars for them. Um, a uh, a three B, if you're if you're familiar with the Raspberry Pi and that type of thing, that's a thirty five dollar board. They're selling them for two hundred. Once in a while, you can grab and find a three A plus for twenty five dollars, and I bought like three of them from Micro Center, so they are available, but very very hard to find. Now, what goes on top of these is what's called a DMR or digital hat. It's a daughter board. Okay, and what that daughter board does is it plugs right on top of the uh, Raspberry Pi. It's a UHF radio, and it does all the um, uh, conversion between analog and digital and back again. The hotspot connects to your, uh, uh, in your home or office directly to the router or to the modem. Like I said, it can be you know, tied into your Wi-Fi in your car, which it is in mine, your cell phone. I, agree, I told you that as well. Okay, and you can buy one of those cellular hotspots uh, and modems, uh, like a jetpack or something like that from Verizon, and it works with that as well. The hotspot can be powered with a very simple five volt DC battery pack, similar to what you would do to recharge your telephone. Put it in your pocket, talk around the world. Okay, now, the hotspot pricing, as you saw, went from like uh, $50 to um, $400. If you have, a, have it based on a Raspberry Pi, there's free software called PiStar software. Now, PiStar uh, is very easy to, to, to load on a, a download from the internet, uh, burn a, 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 um, uh, an SD card, Okay, and very easy to, I shouldn't say very easy to program, but not di too difficult to program if you understand it. <laughs> but the prices are so, uh, the price range is so enormous. And, but they're all the same. The only difference is maybe is a display. Some have no display, some have a tiny display. Uh, the car, the one in my car was a three and a half inch display. However, the best display is using your browser on a tablet, laptop, or computer. And you get to see all that stuff without even a display on the hotspot. Now, remember this. They all perform exactly alike. Remember, because it's all the same software. So don't overspend, which is what I did the first time. And my mission is not to, not to have anybody spend too much money on this stuff. 
Uh, Shark RF is a very interesting hotspot. And um, it has nothing to do with, with Raspberry Pi. Uh, they started out being very expensive. You'll see a picture of it. Uh, they're, 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 they've come down in price, but it has a built-in battery. It's really made to, um, uh, to be very portable. You know, slip it in your suitcase. Some people use it on the airplane. I couldn't get mine to work on the plane. And, um, uh, and it's, um, it's pricey. Okay. Let's talk. These two hotspots are identical. Okay. The top one and the bottom one. The bottom one, the price was $315. And I got this from Amazon. I bought this one directly from Japan from, uh, um, I think it's called AliExpress or something like that. And it was $71 shipped and tax. And sometimes you can find this a little bit cheaper, a few bucks cheaper. Same exact box. The only difference is, is this comes overnight and this one you have to wait three weeks for. Okay, this is what was inside that little, uh, 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 that little uh, hotspot that you saw on the previous page. This is a nano pie. It is not a Raspberry Pi. But the Pi Star people uh, came out with a version of their software that runs on this board, the Nano Pi. That's the price, 25 bucks, $23. This is the hat that goes on it. So this plugs in to these pins here. Okay, this is the cutout, okay, for uh, the RJ45 connector. The little SD card plugs in here. Okay. The only problem is I can't find a, a, a box for this. So uh, you can build it in, again. You can build a hotspot for 50 bucks, but you can't protect it in a box. Okay. We talked about the, uh, hot, the open spot by uh, Shark RF. Uh, this is the first one I bought. It was $450. This is the newest of the new. It's $360. And some people were even lucky enough to get this on sale uh, at Christmas time. This has, um, in addition to DMR and um, uh, uh, D-Star and P25 and Fusion, it also does some translation between the different modes. So you can, you can the DMR radio can talk to a D-Star network and that type of thing. So, I mean, there's a lot of things that, that make this stuff work. It's phenomenal, but I'm trying to keep it simple. Very, very simple. Okay, these are all my hotspots. Okay, this, this hotspot is a $25 Raspberry Pi board. This hotspot here is also the same board, but it's in a, in a, in a, um, uh, in a uh, Lucite case. Um, this, uh, uh, oh, as a matter of fact, that's the same thing in a metal case. This is a Raspberry Pi 3 with a lot of uh, USB and RJ45 connectors. This board should be thirty-five dollars. Uh, they're ripping everybody off, selling it for two hundred. These units here, all identical, vary in price depending upon where I bought them, from one hundred and eight dollars down to about sixty-five dollars. If I put it together like this, without a display, this has a display. Without a display, that's like twenty-five dollars. My very first hotspot I bought was this. I got this from HRO, $175 without the case. They all do the same thing, folks. They all do the same thing. You can't tell the difference between them. They all do the same thing. Okay. Now, I bought a dozens of the uh, $12 radios. And, um, and I bought a bunch of hotspots as well, too, although some of them, some of them have already been sold. Uh, I got I to get rid of this stuff. Okay, I'm finished experimenting. I've accomplished my goal. Uh, now, here's the deal I'm willing to make anybody and everybody. If you help me by taking this gear off my hands, okay, I will throw in that little $12.32 channel DMR radio. So all you do is pay for a hotspot. 
Okay. And I'm not making a profit. This is not, this is not a business making venture here. This is, this is just trying to, um, uh, I'm trying to save technician licenses that lost their interest in a hobby. That's, that's really my mission. Okay. Um, so you can get gear from China, Amazon, or a ham store. It's all there. Um, uh, and uh, my sources are your sources. I mean, I've done all the research and I'll be happy to, to, to share it with anybody and everybody. Okay, but here's the deal. You fill out a, if you get something from me, you fill out a, what I call a DMR intake form where you give me basic information. Um, you have to get a radio ID and all this other stuff, but I program everything up for you so that when I give it to you, all you have to do is press the push to talk button and talk. It's ready to go. Okay. Now, I, I don't care where you get your equipment from. There's so many guys that are in DMR that there's somebody knows something about what you bought. And they're more than happy to share their, uh, their knowledge. There's a lot of YouTube uh, videos on there for people who um, uh, are trying to explain to you what DMR is, okay? Um, I don't want to learn about any new equipment. Uh, I'm done learning. Uh, so if you buy something from somewhere and it's something that I'm familiar with, I'll program it up for you. Get it ready for you, okay? Here's the goal. Think about this for a minute. The goal is to get you on the air especially uh, technician licensees who uh, lost interest in the hobby with the least amount of work, time, and aggravation for you and for us. That's the goal. Now, this is, uh, this is my inventory of radios. Um, and that was taken a while ago, so it's a little bit less now. Um, okay, this is what I recommend for the, for the first setup. All right. It's a hotspot and a radio. Now, <laughs> this hotspot that's in this picture here is $71. Hotspots cost me anywhere from $63 to $200. I shouldn't say that. They cost more than that. But I'm not selling. I won't let go the more expensive hotspots uh, that I paid for because I think they're overpriced. There's no reason for somebody to spend more than, in my opinion, more than $100 on a hotspot. It just isn't worth it. Okay. Uh, AliExpress, that's who I bought from. Uh, I bought some stuff on eBay. Uh, this little NanoPi Neo is a nice little, cool little uh, board, and it's fun to play with. Okay. But everything is, uses this Pi Star software. Now, I can't find this case. I found some Lucite cases that are not as protective as this, but I can't find a case. So I came to the conclusion that it's not worth building hotspots. It's worth just buying it ready to go for about 70 bucks because they work at, at, as soon as you get them. And uh, trying to put them together and source the parts and everything while it's fun, it takes too much time. Okay. Now, some of you want to learn about DMR, okay? I am not the one to teach it to you. I don't want to teach it to you, okay? But whenever you're ready, okay, there's lots of literature. There's lots of YouTube videos. There are lots of, uh, of um, what's the word, um, uh, Facebook uh, uh, interest groups, that type of thing. And uh, uh, it's easy to find sources. For, for to learn about this stuff, okay? I just want you to talk and enjoy, talk around the world, have some fun, okay? Eat your fish from Safeway. Don't go fishing with my brother-in-law, all right? And um, enjoy the social side of ham radio before you get all caught up in the technical side of DMR. All right, Alex, you can take over. Well, thank you, Dick. That was awesome. Very really valuable presentation a lot of good information and a lot of good recommendations and uh it shows that you put a lot of work into this 
and 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 your goal is certainly worthy. Um, so, do we have questions? Oh, take if you would unshare. Oh, Dick. unshare. Stop sharing. Okay. Hi, Dave. By the way, I just saw <laughs> okay. you on the screen. All right. So, questions starting with Dave. Dave, over to you. I've got to uh, tell everybody. Dick got me started in DMR. And I went over to his house and I was going to uh, buy a HF rig. And he said, no, this is, this is better. This is anyway, he started me with a little El Cheapo radio and I bought a hotspot. My first contact was my first one was in Korea. And since I had worked in Korea, I was rather excited about that. But then I made contacts all over the world. So this this is marvelous, a, a fantastic. Dick, thank you for getting me started on it. Uh, I've graduated. I now have the Any Anytone uh, 878 uh, and, a, and a, a different hotspot, but it's it's fabulous. Great, thank you, Dave. By, by the way, Dave, Dave was faced with challenges of putting up antennas and so on and so forth where he lives in this retirement community. And this is why I, I believed very strongly, and I guess he's a believer now, is that uh, this allows him to enjoy, enjoy ham radio without the hassle. Great. All right. Thanks. David, W2LNX. So I have a comment and a question. So I didn't realize that DMR is a standard. I thought it was a Motorola thing because I needed to register my DMR ID through a Motorola website. So you can comment on that. And the other question, this is a question. Um, is there like a mothership that you connect when you use the uh, DMR radios over the uh, internet? And in the sense, uh, do you need some kind of server? What I'm really getting to is, can you have, let's say a wireless uh, internet intranet, like MAPIN, like a, a, a IP network, which is not connected to the internet with a capital I to connect to repeaters far apart. So uh, that's my question. Okay. First of all, DMR was a, a standard that was created in Europe, has nothing to do with Motorola. Uh, Motorola, however, uh, I'm sure licenses it and um, uh, they sell a lot of DMR equipment. And a lot of people use uh, surplus uh, Motorola equipment as well. Uh, there are uh, multiple networks. The granddaddy network that I use is something called brandmeister.network. And uh, they, as a matter of fact, uh, if you go to brandmeister.network, um, you can uh, listen uh, uh, to, uh, they have something called hose line. And you can listen to every uh, channel that's active without a radio. And uh, that, that works out uh, uh, pretty well. Um, the, uh, so it, it, there is a mothership and there's more than one mothership and they have lots of different networks. Motorola has networks, this Brandmeister company has networks, excuse me, and so on. <laughs> Between you and me, I don't know much about it because I was, I, uh, my goal was is just to make it work not to learn about all the different options that you have and all the different things you can do and all that. I mean, you, let's put it this way. This is like the, the, the tip of the iceberg. The iceberg must go down a, 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 a thousand feet into the ocean and, and we're showing an inch and a half, okay? <laughs> There's, and, I, and I don't know about what's under the ocean. I just know about the top inch and a half. Does that help? Yeah, so basically HT to HT uh, and connecting two radios through uh, DMR repeaters uh, through a private network is a, could, could be problematic. That's what you're saying. I, I, I don't know whether it's problematic, but I would say that it's, it's not emergency communication because you got all this infrastructure involved. It's just, um, uh, it's, it, it's, you know, I know, I know that uh, uh, that uh, the um, emergency services, uh, you know, uh, police and fire and that kind of people are using the DMR radios. But um, 
Uh, it's, it's just another means of communication. That's all it is. It's not the only means. It's not the best means. It's one more. That's all. Okay. Thank you. Any more questions? Yes. Go ahead. I was going to type it out here. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Dick, for all you've done for the ham community. I can hardly wait to get my radio on Saturday. I happen to be a member of the Heritage Hunt Ham Radio Club. I am in Virginia. If you don't know where the Heritage Hunt Ham, uh, the Heritage Hunt uh, division is, subdivision, it's near Gainesville, Virginia, just outside of Manassas. Of course, they have a huge HOA and they have antenna restrictions. They got around some of those by offering emergency communications. One of the other things that the club has done has been to offer courses for new hams. So we have a bunch of technician class licenses and hearing this DMR stuff, I mean, it, it just looks like a win-win uh, a situation. Uh, so Dick, how do I get you out to Heritage Hunt to talk to the club? <laughs> it has to be done on Zoom. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, I think that can be done on Zoom. Yes. I don't see that that should be a problem. Thank so, you. All right, you're welcome. And by the way, Roy, KT6B, uh, your, your hotspot's sitting right here next to me. So it's, it's coming up. Okay, Hank? Yeah, I, uh, Dick, I uh, thought you might take your case that you can't find anywhere and take it to someone in the club that's got a 3D printer, have it replicated. And maybe that'll become a source. Uh, they, I guess that however they do it, I think they can also uh, develop a code or fingerprint, if you will, of that case. And then that could be sent to anybody with a 3D printer that uh, could then duplicate it. Just a suggestion. No, no, good suggestion. And what I want to show you here is this is the uh, Nano Pi, okay, in a just between two Lucite plates. This was uh, three and a half dollars for the case to protect this, um, uh, this, um, uh, the hotspot. And uh, this, this hotspot uh, belongs to uh, KT6B. He's gonna get it on Saturday. And he's on, the, he's on here tonight. Okay, so that's his in a little case. So, but thank you for that suggestion, it's a good one. But Hank, I have to say that um, I just wanna dump this stuff and, and call it a day and move on to next. No, I, I understand, but uh, thinking of somebody that uh, would like to figure out how to find cases, you know, I, I get several sources, but as you say, there's some places you just can't find the right case. And it was amazing that um, AK3Y has done some things for me uh, with a 3D printer and the, the use of a 3D printer is just astounding, but not having room for one i don't have one and i have a nephew that uh, has one and the, the things he builds uh, for parts as well as for full-scale items just amazes me yeah by but the way th this this 400 hour hotspot the case was built with a 3d printer my goodness okay and it, right. and it has a big it has a big screen on it and it uses the raspberry 3 uh, uh b as yeah. as the as a computer board Okay, thank you very much for our excellent thank presentation. You. Thank you for your comment. I appreciate it. Okay. Dave? My uh, El Chipo Contra radio, uh, Indemar radio, is available to anyone who wants it. Um, I Dick gave it to me, and I'm ready to pass it on to somebody else. Thank you, Dave. All right, Mark? Yeah, I was going to say uh, about 3D printers, uh, there's this thing uh, on the internet called Thingiverse, where people upload software for various things that they have created. And I have found going up there, I don't have a 3D printer, but I have access to one. Um, 
that so many things that we would like to have 3D printed, somebody has already done it. And the software is up there and you just download it from Thingiverse and off you go. As long as you have someone or you have yourself a 3D printer. So uh, Dick, you might look, maybe somebody has printed something for that particular hotspot. It wouldn't surprise me at all. Back to <laughs> Alex. Thanks. Okay, thanks. Uh, Roy had his hand up. Fairfax County libraries have uh, 3D printers and they're available for use free. And uh, they will even do a certain amount of handholding. If you come in with a design file, they'll help you print it. Oh, good to know. Oh, Thanks. let me add to that. The Rockville Science Center runs the Rockville Makerspace and there's a 3D printer there. I know because it interferes with the uh, technician class or <laughs> VE test sessions, <laughs> especially the milling machine. But speaking about commercial uh, bureaus that make uh, do 3D printing, some of them mill out or do something with aluminum um, and metal. Hmm. So I don't know what the cost is, but yeah. it's out there. Great. Well, I guarantee you when I stop looking for a case, that'll be when I find it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, any more questions? All right, all good stuff. Thank you. Great questions, great presentation. Thank you Any all for listening. Comments? Go ahead. And now I want to thank everybody for listening. And we only lost three people, which I didn't put too many people asleep. Um, <laughs> so um, uh, I will consider this one a success. Yes, amen, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay, thanks again. Okay. And I hope you get a lot of people interested. I'm sure you will. Uh, well, to tell you the truth, wait a minute, hold on one second. Just, just yes. let me let me just double check this thing. Um, I have um, just so people know, I only have seven hotspots left, and once they're gone, they're gone. Okay. All right. And you may want to put something on the reflector. You know, we're going to post your uh, video on the reflector, and um, and you may want to just you know forward that and say if there's anybody else that wants one this is how many i have left i just a suggestion okay great thanks dick all right take all right, care we're good thank you all right we're going to stop the recording